Okay, now let's look at some reactions of amines. Now, we all remember that amines, like ammonia, are bases. And so let's look at amines as bases. If you have an amine, you had HA, uh, you will get this reaction. Note the pKa must be less than 10. It must be a relatively decent acid because a pKa of a protonated amine is between 10 and 11, depending on the amount of R groups on there. So for this reaction to go to the right, Note this is our acid, the protonated amine is our conjugate acid. This has to be a stronger acid than our protonated amine for the reaction to go to the right. We learned that in chapter two. Okay, so the main time you see it, and you saw it throughout Gen Chem 2 and Gen Chem 1, is when you have a carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acid plus an amine. Uh, the amine will take off this hydrogen right there to make the carboxylate. Very common. Uh, note that when you protonate the amine, amines in general are not water soluble as long as R has more than five carbons. And let's face it, most amines, the R's are more than five carbons, so most amines are not water soluble. However, when you protonate it, when you make RNH3+, plus, even though this R group can be quite large, since this is now ionic, you've got a cation here, it now is much more water soluble. Here is an example where if you take this molecule, diphenhydramine, it's not water soluble, but turns out diphenhydramine is a pretty nice antihistamine. And so you want to be able to take it, and it's nice to take it in pill form versus injecting it. And so we want this thing to be a nice solid that you can take and will do good things for you. So if you react with HCl, then that will protonate that amine. We get this protonated diphenhydramine. They call it diphenhydramine hydrochloride because you put the hydrogen on there and then got the chloride. And you know it as Benadryl. Okay. We won't go into it, but this is also the way that an amine, the amine cocaine, is taken out of the coca plant because cocaine is an amine and you turn it into the powdered cocaine by reacting it with HCl. Don't do drugs. Okay. So, uh, some more stuff though about the acidity and basicity of this stuff. Uh, NH4, you, when you protonate an amine, or just ammonia, the pK is 9.3. Note, with a methyl group on that, or an ethyl group on that nitrogen, a protonated ethyl amine, so this would be an ethyl ammonium a cation, its pK is 10.8. It is more basic. All right. Uh, what about this guy right here? What if you look at aniline? How basic is that lone pair there? Well, if we want to know how basic it is, well, uh, let's look at if we added a hydrogen to this lone pair, we would end up with this beast. Recall that in aniline, this lone pair is delocalized with this ring here. We know delocalization makes things more stable. So this aniline, this lone pair is more stable than you would expect, which means it's not quite as reactive as you might want it to be. And another way to look at it is if you form a bond between this lone pair and H+, plus, you, form, you make the acid to make this beast here, note that that bonding pair is now no longer delocalized into the aromatic ring. It doesn't want to do that. that, that Bonding pair doesn't actually want to be a bonding pair, it'd rather be a lone pair so it could delocalize in the ring, which means a protonated aniline actually has a pK of 4.6. It is a much stronger acid than regular NH4 plus because it does it would it prefers to give up one of these protons so that the to have that lone pair that could delocalize into that ring. All right. Well, what do electron donating and electron withdrawing groups do to that lone pair on the nitrogen of aniline? Well, one could expect that if you've got an electron donating group, if you're donating electron density to this ring, 
and these two electrons are delocalized a bit into the ring, that the more electron density in the ring, the more electron density can get delocalized to this nitrogen. That would make them more basic. So electron donating groups make an aniline more basic. Electron withdrawing groups pull electron density away from the ring, therefore these two, the lone pair would spend more, uh, has more electron density pulled away from it towards the, benz, towards the benzene ring here. So electron withdrawing groups make it less basic. Amides, note amides are less basic than amines due to this resonance right here. So amides are much less basic than amines because they are resonance stabilized and if you protonate it, you lose this resonance stabilization. All right. Other situations here. Note we have this molecule pyridine. In pyridine, this lone pair is not part of the aromatic system. Uh, we've already got a double bond or delocalized electrons here. This lone pair is not part of the aromatic system, so they're more readily protonated. Now, it still has a pKa of the protonated pyridine of 5.3. It's still not the best. It's still pretty acidic, more acidic than ammonia, but that is the case that when you have these lone pairs not part of the aromatic ring. But what if you have parole, where the lone pair is part of the aromatic ring. If you took this lone pair and bonded it to a hydrogen, this is no longer aromatic. It doesn't follow Huckel's rule anymore. Well, boy, that's going to not want to happen, right? Being aromatic makes it very, very stable. These two electrons are very, very stable as long as this is an sp2 hybridized nitrogen, and that lone pair is in an unhybridized p orbital. If you protonate that nitrogen, that lone pair goes into, would go into an sp3 hybrid orbital. This would no longer be aromatic. The molecule doesn't want to do that, which means it doesn't want to be protonated. Which means if you did protonate it, it would want to get rid of that hydrogen real quick. It would be much more acidic. In fact, this is kind of weird. Um, because this, these lone pairs are part of the pi system, if you protonate parole, you don't actually protonate the nitrogen. You protonate one of the carbons alpha to the nitrogen. This, the lone pair is going to actually form a, a pi bond over here. You're going to protonate one of these carbons over here. Nitrogen still will end up with a positive charge because it will have four bonds, but it's this carbon over here that gets protonated. pKa is 0.4. That's pretty decent acid strength right there. Okay. And when you look at papyridine here, note this is just a normal sp3 hybridized carbon, so we'd expect the pKa's to be around 10 or 11. Um, more basic than ammonia. Ammonia, remember, is 9.3 is its pKa. More basic than ammonia because you got two R groups on there, so that falls right in line with our thinking here. And why is pyridine at 5.3? Uh, because note that this nitrogen here in pyridine is sp2 hybridized, not sp3. So we've got higher S character, and which means that the uh, electrons are held a little more tightly, uh, less likely to want to be donated to a, a hydrogen. All right. So that is looking at amines as basis, bases. Let's look at amines as nucleophiles. Good news, we've looked at a lot of this already. So we've got almost a page of review here. And people say Watson never reviews. Ha, liars. Okay, so recall that if you have an aldehyde or a ketone, you can react an aldehyde or ketone with a primary or secondary amine. Recall, aldehyde or ketone, primary amine forms an imine. Secondary amine forms an enamine. We did that a couple chapters ago. All right. Note, if you have a, an amine, ammonia, primary or secondary amine with an acid chloride or an anhydride, recall that this is just nucleophilic acyl substitution. The first, amone, the first amine attacks the carbon, 
And Z is a leaving group, and so it attacks carbon, double bond breaks, double bond reforms, Z leaves, but then you'd end up with a protonated NH3 plus dangling off that carbon. So the second equivalent of the amine comes in to deprotonate it to make the NH2. Just something to get into your head. Oh, RCOZ with an acid chloride or an anhydride, very good leaving groups. Two equivalents of ammonia, you get the amide. Okay. Also recall that if you have aniline and you want to do RCL, ALCL3, what do we call that reaction? That's right, friedel -Crafts. If you want to do a friedel -Crafts, that's no reaction. This is a fairly decent Lewis base. And so we got a really nice Lewis acid. The aniline will attack our Lewis acid, kill the acid, no acid, no reaction. All right, so what can we do then? Well, if you have your aniline here, instead of reacting it with RCL, react it with the acyl chloride. Because if you do this, react with, react with the acyl chloride, you don't need AlCl3. This is just a straightforward nucleophilic acyl substitution. You will put this group onto the amine. Now, the, once that group is on the amine, on the amine, now you can do your Friedel-Crafts reaction because you've changed your aniline into acid analyte. Recall acid analyte not as ring activating, therefore this lone pair will not attack our catalyst. You can do friedel crafts with acid analyte. So you take aniline, react it with normal uh, electrophilic a or the a nucleophilic acyl substitution. You get acid analyte. Do your friedel crafts with our acid analyte, which will give it, well, recall, this is an ortho para director, so you get the ortho and the para. And then you can just do aqueous or base, or Acid, acid or base catalyzed hydrolysis of our uh, acid analyte. It's an it's an amide, carbonyl nitrogen. We've made an amide here, so we can do hydrolysis to get back to the amine. Cool. All right. Let's see. Now. Now along comes Hoffman. And Hoffman was doing some interesting stuff. Hoffman was doing some stinky stuff. Uh, Hoffman was saying, okay, amines are horrible leaving groups. So if I have an amine, I've got a bad leaving group, but I don't care. I want to change that amine into an alkene. I want to do an elimination reaction with an amine as a leaving group. But amines are poor leaving groups. How do I do that? And Hoffman probably thought to himself, well, I recall if I have an alcohol and I want to do a D, uh, reaction to make an alkene, I do a dehydration. But of course, we remember that has to be an acid catalyzed dehydration. So when you have a bad leaving group like OH minus, you convert it into a good leaving group somehow to get it to leave and you can do your elimination. So Hoffman said, okay, I've got a, an amine here. Bad leaving group. How do I convert it to a good leaving group? And this is what Hoffman did. He said, okay, what if I've got my amine, and it's, I'm drawing it kind of freaky here. This is CH3, CH2, CH2, NH2 here, just a simple propylamine. I'm going to react it with CH3I, a lot of excess CH3I. And you remember from above that, okay, I've got an alkyl halide, I've, which uh, I died, very good leaving group. I've got an amine here. I know this is very pretty darn nucleophilic lone pair right here. So I know this nitrogen will attack that carbon, kick off the iodide, and that'll put a methyl group on here. And what Hoffman found is if he bumps up our concentration of CH3I, puts a lot of excess CH3I, you can get this reaction to occur three times. Note, now some of it's to be expected. We'd expect to add 
two of these CH3s on here because as you add a CH3 onto this nitrogen, this nitrogen becomes more nucleophilic. So we put a bunch of excess in there, we'd expect to add two more on there to have a nitrogen with no hydrogens on it, two methyl groups, and then this propyl group on it. But what Hoffman found out is if he really bumps that up, I can add a third one on here. He could add a third methyl group on there, and now this nitrogen has positive charge. It's a ammonium type compound with three methyls and this propyl group on it, and iodide is the counter ion, is the anion. And then Hoffman remembered his Gen Chem 1. Do you remember your Gen Chem 1? Do you remember solubility rules? All iodides, chlorides, and bromides are soluble except those with silver, mercury 1, and lead 2 plus. So I, so Hoffman said, oh, I've got iodide here. I need to get that out of here. I can precipitate it out with silver. And he found out if he put in silver oxide instead of a different silver salt, that not only does he precipitate out, precipitate out AGI as a solid, but then the counter ion becomes hydroxide. And it turns out ammonium hydroxides Substituted ammonium hydroxides aren't super stable. If you heat them up, they will form the alkene. You can do the elimination with this hydrogen. The OH- minus here will attack this hydrogen to make water. This bonding pair here becomes a pi bond here, and it kicks off methylamine. And while this is good, boy... What do you remember about meth trimethylamine? Yeah, that's the rotten fish smell. So Hoffman, by the way, wins the Nobel Prize in chemistry for his work, uh, but it was a stinky lab to work in unless you were very diligent about working in the hoods. Okay. So let's look at some examples here and then show why Hoffman really got some fame. So if you have this amine, here's a secondary amine, a cyclopentyl amine here. You add a bunch of CH3I, AG2O, and heat. So you look at this, oh, CH3I, AG2O, and this is a check mark right there, oh, AG2O. Uh, and heat, we know that's Hoffman elimination and that's going to eliminate, this is now going to be a leaving group. So here's our alpha carbon that contains the, our leaving group. Where's the beta carbon? Well, it's down here or here, same thing. And so we know we're going to get a double bond right there. Now, the interesting thing about the Hoffman elimination is its regioselectivity. What Hoffman found is if we had this molecule here, it's looking a little busy here, but it's essentially what we had, the same molecule we had up here, but let's put a methyl group right there. So take a cyclohexane or cyclopentane ring with an amine on it and alpha to that carbon that contains the amine. Let's put a methyl group right there. And I just put the hydrogens on here too. Note, if normally you would do an elimination, you would expect these two products because this is our leaving group and we've got a hydrogen alpha on this carbon here. We've got a two hydrogens alpha on this carbon here. And normally we'd expect this to be our major product because that gives us our more substituted alkene and this to be the minor product. Remember, that's what Zaitsev said. What Hoffman found was due to steric hindrance, of this leaving group because remember you've got three methyls on this nitrogen that's a big bulky thing that the hydroxide has a much faster reaction less hindrance if it comes and takes one of these two hydrogens versus this one because if it's going to take this hydrogen here it's got to fight through the three methyls that'll be on this nitrogen and that methyl there it's just easier to take one of these down here. So the less substituted alkene is the major product. The more substituted alkene is the minor product. It's the opposite of Zaitsev. In fact, when I learned gen or when I learned organic one, we just called this the Zaitsev product and this the Hoffman product. 
And so my test questions were like, which is the major product, the Zaitsev or the Hoffman product? And throughout Organic 1, we answered, of course, the Zaitsev product, and we have no idea what Hoffman was all about. And it was always, well, why do you call it the Hoffman product? And they're like, shut up, you'll learn about it in Organic 2. And so we did shut up, and we did learn about it in Organic 2. Good. So there's a take-home message here. You see an amine? You see the Hoffman reagents here. You know you're going to get an elimination to form a double bond. So you just have to look at, okay, where's the alt carbons alpha to the carbon containing the amine? I'm going to form a double bond here. And the major product will be the less substituted double bond. Cool. So if we have this right here, the cyclo methyl cyclohexylamine, and we put in our Hoffman reagents, we note that, well... Here's the carbon that contains the amine. Beta is here, beta here, that would give me the same thing, but there's beta hydrogens on this carbon here. So one would expect the double bond here or the double bond here. We'd expect these two products, and Zaisev would say, man, I kid you not, if you ran this reaction uh, with a normal leaving group like iodide right here, or chloride, a normal decent leaving group, you would only see this. You wouldn't see any of this in the NMR, because there'd be so little of this. But do Hoffman, and you get this as your major product. You mainly get this less substitute double bond, and you don't get much of that. Cool. Well, we'll end this here and then go to some uh, pretty cool stuff. And it's real cool because we're going to go back to benzene chemistry. We're going to go back to uh, the beginning of the semester. And so it's going to be review-ish in a way. Gotta love that.